Hello, this is Mark Hubs with Aeros Gone Bullet Molds. I've seen some traffic recently on some of the Facebook sites for black powder shooting concerning the relationship between the chamber size and the bore size of reproduction black powder revolvers. So I did a little experiment. I have a handful of black powder revolvers. And on each one, I pressed a bullet into the chamber, took the gun apart, removed the nipple, and pressed that bullet out of the chamber. That way it would tell me exactly what size that chamber was. I then pressed that same bullet through the muzzle of the gun, or actually through the breech of the gun, toward the muzzle on the Colts, and from the muzzle to the breech on Remington revolvers to see if I could get uh, an exact engraving of the rifling of the lands and grooves on that conical bullet. And that way I could compare the chamber and the bore diameter. It would also tell me if the bullet was completely filling the lands and grooves on that particular revolver. So stay with me and I'll show you what I found out. Let me be clear about my intent of this exercise. When a bullet is loaded into the cylinder of a revolver, it is swayed to the exact diameter of that chamber. In a perfect world, it should not be swayed smaller in diameter than the groove diameter of the barrel, but should fill those grooves completely. But as we know, most reproduction revolvers have a chamber size that is smaller than the groove diameter. I don't know if this is true for original revolvers. Maybe someone watching this will conduct a similar experiment for us with an original gun. So my intent is not to just determine the chamber size, but reveal the relationship between that chamber and bore diameter for each individual gun. We will be looking at seven different revolvers of various makes and years of manufacture. I used the Johnston Dow bullet and the Colt Cartridge Works bullet uh, for this experiment, but any, any bullet would have worked, even a round ball. Another consideration on filling the bore properly is something I cannot measure with this test. That is obturation, or bumping up, as it is sometimes called. It only takes a little over 7,000 pounds per square inch for soft lead to obturate and properly fill the breech and grooves of a barrel. Do our black powder revolvers develop enough pressure to fully obturate a bullet? I suspect they do, but I don't have the means to verify that. The bullet on the left has been loaded into a chamber and thus swaged down to chamber diameter. It was then pushed back out from the rear through the nipple hole. The right one was driven through the bore. The lands made deep grooves in the bullet, but the chamber diameter was not quite large enough to fill the grooves. There is no sign the bullet touched the bottom of the grooves. I've had good accuracy reports on this bullet from several sources, so this may make little difference, or the bullet is bumping up to fill the grooves. The chamber diameter of the Griswold is about perfect in relation to the bore. The grooves filled it completely. I suspect that this would be true for all Pieta 36s, but I don't have any order, uh, others to test or verify. I'm no marksman, but my Griswold seems to shoot about the same with this bullet as it does my Verde Model 51. Although this Walker is in like new condition, it was made 38 years ago. I don't know if newer Walkers will have the same chamber and bore sizes. Period style conical bullets will not fit into the loading port on Walker, so I had to load the cylinder off of the gun. That is why the noses are blunted, so I use a soft mallet to tap them into the chamber. You'll see that there's good engraving with the rifling, or the, or the blands, but uh, it does not bottom out into the grooves. This Uberti Dragoon is quite a bit newer than the old Walker that you saw before, and it has a tighter chamber. It's got very good engraving with the rifling, and it, although it doesn't bottom out into the grooves, uh, it comes very close. This is another ancient Uberti, this one 41 years old. I've acquired this recently and still have not even shot it. And after 40 years plus of reenactor's use, uh, the rifling seems rather shallow compared to the other 44s I looked at. But the bullet fills the grooves completely. The chamber and bore size match is almost perfect. I've shot this Pieta probably more than any of my other revolvers, and I've altered the loading port so it will take uh, combustible cartridges. And it shoots very well, even though, as you can see, the uh, engraving on the rifling uh, doesn't fill 
the grooves all the way. I assume that it, it is also bumping up uh, to fill those grooves. And last but not least is my Remington New Model Army. I've shot it quite a bit also. And as you can see, uh, it engraves very well. And there's just a hint that the lead is touching the bottom of the grooves. So it probably would not take very much to, uh, to get this one bumped up to proper size either. Well, thanks for watching. That's what I found out with my revolvers. If you've done similar uh, tests with yours, I'd love to hear the results to see if there's some consistency with brand and time frame of manufacture. Also, I'd love to see bullets that were recovered from gelatin uh, to see if they are bumping up to fill those grooves. Please visit our website, and if you enjoyed the uh, video, give us a like. Thanks a lot.